Hello everyone and welcome to another Toon Boom animation tip video. I'm Adam and I'm going to tell you today how to make a, an animated GIF or GIF or GIF, whatever it's called. I'm going to call it GIF for this video. How do we use these really handy little formats that are super popular on the internet and how do we export them from Toon Boom? I've got a couple of uh, useful bits of information. This is a bit more of a beginner's tutorial. Uh, we can go over a few settings, but I've also got some other handy bits of information for you um, about how we can uh, customize these and format them for ways which are most useful to us when putting them online, social media, and everything else in between. So I've got my little animated car here chugging away, and it's on a loop of 18 frames. So you, the first thing to notice is I have uh, this little red play sort of this is the scene length um, kind of bracket I guess we'll call it so if I drag this here this allows me to have elements up to uh, 50 frames and if I press F5 on a layer and then drag this back because the F5 extends the exposure of the drawing so it makes that drawing visible for 50 frames but I've dragged this red play sort of bracket the scene bracket backwards and that's sort of making it disappear. So it's one of the things to remember is this is kind of like your sort of your master length of the scene. It applies to absolutely everything. This thing kind of defines the default for the for the render in and out, the scene length, when it'll stop. Um, we've also got this other one. It's a kind of a little uh, tiny little black triangle and having lots of problems with that there. Tiny, tiny little black triangle. You might be able to see it's just here. And if I click and drag it, this is the play range. So if I was to press loop and press play, so loops on, it will only go through the play range. So this allows you to focus on a certain part of your scene. So if my scene is 40 frames long, I can focus on the first 18 frames. And this is useful for if you're working on animation, um, like a loop like this, which is going to be in a scene before a car goes across the, the whole scene and there's other things going on. So these are very useful things to get to know. You can export animated GIFs from certain parts of your animated scene without having to kind of create a whole new scene from it. To access this start and stop range, you can just click um, start and stop. They look like they're not buttons, but they actually are if you move over the text and that will set the play range. So start, stop, and I'm gonna move this Back here because I don't actually want more than those frames. That's the that's the first thing is the uh, setting of the the scene length and the play range. Now this animated GIF, um, you can see here I've got some some colors and uh, everything's sort of ID tagged so it has its own individual color. And I've created a small animation like um, some sort of fumes coming off here so you can see there coming off. There's a bit of texture and a bit of clean line work there. That's in another video. I'm going to talk about combining um, vector artwork and bitmap artwork in Toon Boom, the benefits and why you might want to do that, and what the other options are for you, like the vector texture brush, which is quite a new thing. But uh, we've got this animation here. Um, I've got a little bit of animation on my aerial at the top, which has got a deformer on it that I can, uh, you can see just putting a little bit of bounce on there. And what else have I got? I've got the wheels here and here, just kind of like bobbing around. And the same for the car. The, the car has a, a peg on it and it just bounces around a bit. So very simple, but a nice little uh, demo for you. So what to do to export this? Well, if we go to File and then Export, you've got Movie, um, Render Write Nodes, which is the, uh, if you have a node in here called a Write Node, that will um, export often multiple things uh, if you have multiple write nodes in your scene. Export Movie is often the quick one if you just want to quickly put a movie out there. Then you've got uh, Swift or SWF, the old um, Flash format that's really not used very much anymore. Um, individual OpenGL frames, audio, layout image, lots of things. But the animated GIF option is here. Now, I think this used to be in Toon Boom back in the day, and then they removed it and they put it back in uh, because it's super popular now. So to export, it's really simple. You just make your animation. Now just be careful with GIFs that obviously they're gonna go increase in file size the more um, colors you put in them, the more complexity. Like you can, you can get a GIF down in terms of file size by keeping the colors simpler uh, because then you can lower the quality of the GIF 
um, afterwards. So Toon Boom doesn't really have any optimization functions built in, but you can do that on other on other websites and services and so on, which I'll show you in another video, because Toon Boom doesn't actually export GIFs with a transparent background, but I've got a very quick workaround for you for that as well, which I'll talk about in that other video. Now, for now, just to export this animated GIF, um, we've got a couple of settings. So where are we going to export it? I'm going to pop mine on my desktop. Uh, display source. So this display here is kind of like a little it's kind of like a TV screen that you're viewing it through. View, uh, through. I can't speak today. Like a TV screen that you're viewing it through. Now, this one, if you don't have a display, you've got display all, which means everything, even if it's not connected to a composite, will export. So just be careful with that. It can get a little bit unruly. You can choose your export range. Now, remember this red play bracket? The reason I went into depth over that is because if you're at frame 40, you are probably going to have to change this from all to frames. And that will be um, kind of like setting the black uh, triangle play range, but you're actually typing it in manually. So you do need to know what's, what frame number your loop starts and finishes on before you go into this, because you can't click into there and check afterwards. You can count backwards, but uh, if the frames are quite small, you might not be able to do that. Then you've got the resolution. So full scene resolution, it tells you in the sort of grayed out brackets here, mine's um, 1920. 1080p HD, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, obviously, GIFs again will get smaller in file size the smaller you export them. So I'm going to keep it to half the scene. There's the all important loop function. This is the thing you need to turn on if you want to make it a loop. Then you've got dithering. Now this thing is basically kind of like blending. Um, it's going to how it's going to uh, combine uh, things like fades or uh, complicated patterns and colors. I'm going to keep mine to none. Uh, you can play around with these settings. It's not something that I want to really get into too much because it depends on the image you're exporting, but by default, you might want to keep this. Um, diffusion is probably the default if you're having issues with color blending, but I'm just going to keep that to none for now. So this is kind of like if you are doing animation and it's just looking a little bit blocky or not quite good enough for you, I'd set it to none. But again, I would generally uh, look at these options when you do the compression of the GIF later on in an external software or service. So then you just click OK. You get a little export, zips through, tells you it's ex exported. And now if I preview this, I've now got a nice little animated GIF of my car chugging out fumes into the world. Um, let's just pretend this is water vapor in it. Uh, hydrogen car but uh yeah there it goes and it's just going to infinitely loop so you can be happy forever by just watching your animated gif so that's a quick introduction about how you you export from from toon boom into animated gifs sections of your scenes or um, whatever you want to do you can choose the display obviously connect them to a composite and then uh, export the the gif that you want to from within a quite a complicated scene and you just have to correct the settings in order to do so. Thanks for watching and I hope it was useful to you.